Welcome everybody out to our Game of the Month discussion for September, where we decided to play StarCraft, the RTS phenomenon from 1998 or 2000 on N64, if you played that version. Love it. But anyway, joining me today, we've got the one and only Sir Wiz. No, wait, that's wrong. <laughs> SM ways sure. and Sir Laws and uh, Claws. <laughs> there we go. There yes. We go. Wow. It made us into Benefer or something right there. <laughs> I just shipped y'all and you don't even realize. Uh, well, I'm not surprised. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. At least it wasn't as bad as the one I did last night with Strum Dick. Oh, no. <laughs> We were giving we're, our we're, kids we're, ice cream treats, and I called them strum dicks. Uh, oh, anyway. Wow. You know, that, anyway. that order of operations with the letters matters. Yeah, yeah. it really does. At least it wasn't uh, fun yeah, records. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, StarCraft, how about that game? Yeah. Fantastic game. We get back on topic here. Uh, anyway. Minecraft Star? Minecraft Star. <laughs> Crine's, Crine's staffed. Anyway, anyway, I'm sure my brain will mix it up and screw it up somehow throughout this discussion, so we don't need to worry about that. It's going to happen. Uh, anyway, so joining me today, we have SM Wiz, Sir Lulz, and McClaws once again. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me in this Game of the Month discussion of StarCraft. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So we'll start with our little newbie down here in orange, McClaws. When did you first play StarCraft? Share with the class. I can't remember. I've been too long. <laughs> did I even play it with you? I think I did. You don't? Did wow. <sighs> it's been too long. I think I played it with you. Okay, where's, where's, the, where's the duck sound effect in Discord chat real quick? Someone, someone please play that. Anyway, anyway, okay, okay, we will move on to Zachary here. Zachary, share with us when you first played StarCraft, and I will fill in McClaws's memory gaps here myself in a minute. Okay, <laughs> so my first experience was with StarCraft II in 2008. Really? Uh, I bought it to play with a friend, hmm. but it wasn't... It was region locked at that point, so come to find mm. out, oh, we can't play or something. So I played mm. it a little bit, uh, and then I played the game we're talking about now, StarCraft 1. I've only actually played the N64 version. I've never touched the PC version of this game. So Excellent. I've been playing that for about three months, if I'm completely honest. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> okay. All right, Wiz, nice. how about you? Uh, yeah, we, our family PC was not good enough to play StarCraft in 1998, so, uh, I, I got StarCraft on the N64 when that came out, oh, yeah. and, uh, which actually worked a little better for us, because, you know, with, uh, dial-up internet, we wouldn't have been able to play online with anybody, but with an N64 and an expansion pack, I could play multiplayer with my siblings, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it that all worked works. out. All right. Very nice. So we got two StarCraft 64 players that started with StarCraft 64, rather. Very cool. Uh, so I picked the game up probably either December 1998, right after Brood War came out, or January 1999. Don't remember when, which one, but it was slightly after Brood War came out because I was over at a friend's house watching him play the last mission of Protoss Brood War's campaign, and... I thought it was the coolest looking crap ever. I was a huge Command & Conquer fan. So, yes, you were. Oh my goodness, StarCraft looks so good. So it's like, okay, how much money do I got? I just got money for... Yeah, it had to have been right after Christmas, because that's when I had money. So I went in Walmart and bought StarCraft. Big old Protoss box. I didn't even get Brood War yet. It was just base StarCraft for a long time. I didn't get Brood War... Oh no, I borrowed my buddy's copy of Brood War like maybe two weeks later and burned a copy of it actually <laughs> yeah i was using a burned copy of brood war until i bought the battle chest in 2010 so yeah i had bootleg brood war for like uh, yeah that one the small one yep 
got the small <laughs> one. It was like five bucks. It's like, yeah, I can have a legit copy of Brood War finally. Let's go. Like, I had crappy burnt CD of it. I had printed out my own label on a label maker and slapped it on there. Like, it was it was a full on bootleg Both thing. Bootleg. Like, it was <laughs> it was incredible. And I used that thing to death. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, you did. I but anyway, that. to clear in, fill in McClaws' memory gaps here. I would host LAN parties at his house. Well, he would host them. Him and his brother would host them, and we'd play StarCraft uh, and a couple other RTSs. But also at my own house, I'd have my other buddy over who was really, really good at StarCraft. See, I considered myself pretty good at that game back in the day. Not anymore. Uh, but I <laughs> yeah. was pretty crap compared to my other friend. And so McClaws Ooh. would come over, and we'd LAN up three computers, and... Uh, uh, my other friend really enjoyed picking on McClaws, so McClaws would play Zerg and or Protoss or something. I don't even remember. He'd play a bunch of different things, but I would cannon wall just to have lols. Like I know I'm not gonna win, so I'll just cannon wall and try to get some carriers up to like prolong my suffering. But <laughs> my other friend was so determined to pick on McClaws here, so he would just go fly into the back of his base, destroy all of his drones, and then leave, and then just uh, call out across the room, hey, McClaws, what happened to all your drones? <laughs> you just hear rude. McClaws go, oh, crap! <laughs> rude. Yeah. Rude. So, yeah, yeah we, we, got a, uh, we got a full eight-player LAN party going once, and that was quite, <laughs> quite a fun time back in the day. And I wish you could remember that. <laughs> Not even back in the day. It was like, good that's stuff. Good times now. That, that is still good times now. But like, I don't. I don't have any friends that live close uh, enough to do a land party. Unrelated anymore, to so. StarCraft, yeah. I actually found you're, work in, you're so far away, man. You're so far away. You want to drive? <laughs> you want to drive an hour to come play StarCraft with me? Like I'm, I'm all for it. I'll fly. I'll, I'll fly. Oh, to let's you. go. Let's do it. <laughs> StarCraft land party. Oh nice. yeah. Oh yeah. Land. But he's anyway. No, anyways, it has to be land. Anyways, so there's something special about being in the same room where you can you know, having each chips other. and Insult. soda yeah. and throwing insults at each other to one another's face instead of over yeah. Discord. Oh yeah, yeah. Insults just don't translate over the wire. No, it doesn't. It's true. The lag, the threat of getting slugged lag. in the arm when you're being you know a little too rude to people. <laughs> you want to be able to both hear and see them flip their desk top in frustration. <laughs> it's true. Okay, it's true. yes, I'll give you that. <laughs> okay um, anyway getting back on topic. Yeah, yeah back on topic here so we had a windows 95 pc from 1995 and i was playing starcraft on it, it ran like garbage but it ran so i mean i loved it and then year 2000 comes out the game comes out on n64 and i picked that up probably around 2001 to play it and outside of the resolution cut like I just loved how much of a full StarCraft experience it really was on console. Like, it was incredible. And even to prepare for this month's Game of the Month discussion, y'all saw me do all the retro achievements for StarCraft 1, or StarCraft 64. And uh, outside of that one level, like, it was just quite a fantastic playthrough. But Yeah, yeah you, you know, I started with the N64 version. So I had nothing to compare it to. I know pe people would always say the PC version is better. I didn't get to do the PC playthrough until 2008. And like I'll admit, like having the videos and the voice acting was super cool. But I mean, you're right. The N64, it's a pretty complete experience. Mm -hmm. And I'll even say in one particular area, being able to select more units with your group was actually really cool. Yeah. That's, that's one thing the N64 decidedly <laughs> does better than the PC. Yeah, it's like that's that, objectively better. At the same yeah, time, they, oh, sorry, McClaws, go for it. I was just saying, I wish they actually put um, StarCraft Two on console. I wish it was on Switch. Touch screen, yeah. touch screen selection, like it would have been great. Um, I, was say, I don't know why RTS never came to the Wii, like with the Wii pointer. That's like that could have worked. That could have totally worked. It it, it, it would have had to have been a slower RTS though with the uh, yeah. IR lag. But yes, I totally yeah. agree with that. Um, but going back to Wiz's, uh, selection note, I mean, that was kind of born out of necessity to the fact that you just aren't able to hotkey as many units on N64 either. You have four groups of hotkeys that you could do. 
So if you limit the hotkey groups to just 12, like on PC, you're not able to build up much of an attack force needed for some of the missions or attacks or other things like that. So especially if you're trying to macro with other casting type units, which I suck at now and would have made my life a heck of a lot easier. Uh, so, I mean, it was just born out of necessity. Like, it's really cool being able to do it. And with the R hotkey to instantly select everything on screen, like, they did a really good, like, mass media, just yeah. I impossible would say, though, port. That, Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I would say, though, that, you know, uh, limits breed creativity. You know, like, 12 was the limit, but that wouldn't be enough. So out of necessity, a better feature came out of it, you know? Yeah. They didn't have the luxury of multiple keys. Yep. I don't know if they have a... Has there ever been any other RTS folder? Have they ever made any other RTS folder game systems? Oh, yeah. Well, Command & Conquer yeah. is on N64 as well. Oh, yeah. Command yeah, & Conquer that's... came out on PlayStation and Saturn in its original DOS-based format. And then N64 got a 3D remake of it. Um, but yeah, Red Alert There's... and its expansions also came out on PlayStation. Warcraft 2 came out on PlayStation and Saturn. Um, a few RTSs have come out on Xbox like, 360 as well. I was yeah. just say, uh, you got the, the Halo RTS and its sequel they did, as we well don't, as we Army don't talk Men about Ar We don't talk about Halo Wars oh, we 1. Talk about Halo Wars, but Halo we don't Wars, talk about Halo Wars. We, we do talk and, about Halo Wars. And anyways, Crappy then there's game. also Army Men RTS. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Army Man RTS. Era, so. That one so, has yeah, the distinct like, yeah. pleasure of actually being developed for consoles instead of PC. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Halo Wars 1, but anyway. Yeah, R yeah RTS can. has kind of slipped off as a genre, but, yeah. you know, unfortunately. Yeah. But, yeah, there there's some other ones out there besides StarCraft. It's It's fun to think about how back in... 1998 through around 2007 ish like rts was the king of gaming genres the king of competitive gaming and then of course uh fps took over in his reign supreme sense but there was like a new rts every week like it was insane back then yeah yeah wasn't there also uh battalion wars wasn't that an rts as well mm. Not really. Not no. really. It was a strategy. It was a strategy game for sure, but it wasn't an RTS. No, it's. See, I it didn't play it. I just, I just looked at it. And... Yeah, it has RTS like elements where you have units and you give them orders, but that's the only similarity. You don't produce them, and you're not in a third person god mode. You're actually a trooper <laughs> on the ground yourself. Yeah, it's so a lot of fun. Back to but it's yes, <laughs> back to StarCraft. <laughs> yes, back okay. What's your guys' favorite um, race? To play for the original StarCraft. Um, uh, I'm just Aaron's. I, I'm just humans. I'm sorry. Nah, that's not uh, I am xenophobic. <laughs> 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 uh, I I will choose Terran as well. I got really proficient at doing siege tanks, uh, siege tank or quick siege tanks to counter all the beginning rushes from. Back then, what were considered like the average players and uh, the bots. So, I mean, it didn't work very well against advanced players because they would just hold off and they'd already have air units to just destroy me. But, like, it was a really good effective strategy back then. And then, of course, uh, with the way the AI works in StarCraft 1, you can wall up with supply depots really easily. So, I mean, I it's just a really that. fun and useful I remember you versatile doing that. race. So, <laughs> I, I really like Terran. I really like Terran. Yeah. Yeah, I probably am about a 55-45 Terran to Protoss. I really enjoy playing them both. It's hard to choose, but I slightly favor the Terran. You know, I feel I, that. I can feel that pretty greatly. I think There's I'll just something play. magical about rolling up on a base with, you know, 18 carriers, you know, <laughs> and seeing your entire game chug as they release the interceptors. Oh my gosh. Boy, I actually, uh, I had a I'll let you speak in a second, yeah. Uh, just on that note of frame chug, it's the N64 as brilliant as they did, it still had some limitations. It was so funny during the first uh, defensive mission where you have to wait 30 minutes for uh, you know evacuation. Like everything's fine, and then all of a sudden, my N64 I played on actual hardware 
my N64 started chugging frames. Like, why are the frames chugging? I don't have that many units. And then, like, Zerg's like, oh, that's why the frames are <laughs> chugging. Something amazing they is were happening. Coming. They were <laughs> just, coming. They were that. coming. <laughs> I just played that mission. I was like, actually started getting on the offense by the time they started coming. Yeah. You can... I, mean, I did kind of use the. Um, I did use the cheat to get 500 minerals to start with. You can uh, you can totally beat you can totally kill them all off before the 30 minutes is up to make the mission go quicker. That's yeah, actually one of the retro That's chivos. Awesome. Um, That'd be awesome. But you, you can aggro them. Quick quick note on performance for the N64 version of StarCraft. Like everyone talks about how that game runs like absolute crap now, no. and yeah, now it does run like absolute crap. But when you were playing StarCraft PC on a 1995 Pentium, it behaved exactly like the N64 version did in all the exact same moments. So jumping from yeah. the 1995 Windows PC to the N64 version, it was a very like-for-like -like experience minus the uh, lack of voice acting, bre mission briefing movies, and cutscenes. Like, I didn't care about any of that, really. Funny is the uh, Nintendo censorship that kicked in. Like, uh, Mike's like, you're a real pain in the bum. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that wasn't in the original StarCraft. But yeah, uh, and I think FPS matters less on an RTS, right? You know, there's an argument for FPS counts in an FPS game, but in an RTS, like, you're giving orders and watching the battle unfold. It, it doesn't matter if it drops a couple frames. It uh, only matters but, in a competitive setting. Yeah. But be you would be a master race you know, player where that wouldn't, you know, even come into effect, yeah. you know? Well, it, exactly. Uh, like, For what you're... You need, when you're playing against other players, you need just a couple of seconds, if, especially if <laughs> someone who might be actually good with macroing, which I am not. <laughs> but if you, but some of, if you actually could do it, that lag can hurt you really badly. Yeah, fair. It can. It can. But again, it's only when it comes to competitive and... I yeah, recently discovered that there is a StarCraft 64 competitive league, of all things. Wow. Interesting. Well, uh, net play, I'd imagine. But yeah, yeah. even if you played on original hardware, your opponent would be having the exact same frame dips you would be having. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it puts you on a nice. even it puts you on an even footing. So that's why in that and if sense. If you're in a competitive league for N64 StarCraft, you know what you're getting into. Let's be yeah, honest. Pretty much. Like it, like the frames are dropping. No, that's that's when you jump into emulation and overclock your emulated N sixty four CPU. So that way it runs like it does on most modern PCs. It was actually pretty Speaking fun. Of which I do want right. to do net play of that. It would I, be fun. I, 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 yeah, I didn't get a chance to do the split screen myself. It's I, it's intense. I'm still just saying. The, when it chugs or whatever, that's just telling you that something awesome is happening. <laughs> it's true though. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. It's, it's kind of like when you see ammo and, you know, it's like, you know, oh, there's a boss fight coming up. It's ammo, like, oh. health, save point. Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah, it's like you kind of get those tingly <laughs> feelings. It's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. something, something spicy about to happen. But, uh, I don't I don't think we heard from a clause what your favorite race to play was. Oh, yes. Potos, only because of, of the Doc Archon being able to <laughs> take control and be able to basically have access to all three races. And so, just show up so with all three ways. So, my clause's answer to the question is all, I, of them. all of them. Like, I'm just all of them. Yeah. Okay. All of them. Take control and, and get access to all of them. And you give me a bigger army. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the 200. You get 600. Mm -hmm. Your limit is not 200. It's going to be 600. 200 for each race. Oh, yeah. More <laughs> units than what, you know, than what your opponent could have. Might I say, except, though, except when we would cannon wall him so he wasn't ever able to steal any of our drones, probes, or SCVs. Let's just, let's just throw that in there as well. I have to back then as well. I have to say the unit cap for the N64 version is very impressive. Like it's they, the same as PC? Is it? Yeah. yeah like I was yeah. impressed like that they got not only that unit count, but like the pathfinding... Because, you know, pathfinding can be very expensive. So the fact that they got it working on N64, like, just, again, you know, 
just ooh. well original starcraft pathfinding wasn't so great to begin with so no not so much but it, it works yes it works, it works well, well enough. enough most most times that's that's <laughs> the whole times. thing though like people either don't want to remember or fail to remember that the n64 was the highest power consumer grade computer when it launched in 1996 it was better than a lot of people's desktops for a long time. So, I mean, look at the games that would come out on N64 versus their PC ports, like Shadows of the Empire. We got more audio and videos in the Shadows of the Empire, but it ran very poorly for a very, very long time on PC. Ran worse in some regards on PC. But, of course, I mean, as soon as, like actual modern GPU started appearing. It's like, ha peace. But I mean, DOS was still like the main, like PC game releases focused on DOS until like 97. Yep. So yeah. just. Got to put it in perspective. Oh yeah. So, I mean, the original launch of the N64 was just, this is the best consumer <laughs> computer yeah. that is available at this time. That's why we got so many friggin' PC ports to it that were so good. Yeah. Um, I guess a question I would have for the group then. So, you know, we've kind of gushed, like, what is your overall, like, not favorite RTS in the sense of expanding the discussion, but how does StarCraft, would you say, compare to other RTSs of its time? Of its BFTC time. Or, yeah, because, you know, obviously nothing modern, just like, and about the late 90s when it came out, you know. Oh, like, yeah. Do you think it stacks up? Is it better, worse? Uh, I think at least until Warcraft 3 came out, it had the best user. Like it, I think it was the only one that actually had like the user map settings the way it did. They gave you access to all the different games you can actually make with it. Um, I think that was the great thing about it. Command & Conquer Red Alert had map editors and stuff like that as well. Yes, but we were able to do, do the, the kind of minigame stuff that you were able to do like with StarCraft, uh, not to the same extent, but in a matter in a manner, yes. That's how you know Command and Conquer Soul Survivor came about was from user maps like that. Um, but I think it's for me the big RTSs of that era were StarCraft, Command and Conquer, uh, Tiberian Sun came out a year after StarCraft, so that was a big deal for me. Um, so Command & Conquer, we'll just, no, I have to include both, or all three, Red Alert, Tiberian Sun, and Original, I have to include all of them, they were big deals for me, uh, but StarCraft, Brood War, Age of Empires 2, and uh, then the Command & Conquer. Oh, how did we like, forget Age of Empires? Yeah. Those were the big ones for me, and I mean, StarCraft always took my imagination because I'm more of a sci-fi fan than... Uh, fantasy and medieval settings. So while I love Age of Empires 2, that was more of a thing my brother loved than I did. So he was the one that played Age of Empires 2 a lot. I played StarCraft. Um, but they were very similar in the way that they worked because you could still select individual buildings to build up units in Age of Empires 2. Uh, so that was a new learning experience for me coming off of Command oh. & Conquer with the sidebar because like the sidebar was life for me for a long time. So it took me a long time to get into StarCraft having to select right. individual buildings to build stuff. But, uh, but yeah, like, for me, uh, yeah. my first RTS was actually Homeworld. So Whoa. that's kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but yeah, what? I'm not used to like individual base building because for those that don't know, Homeworld, you essentially just get one ship and instead of building a base, you just get one ship that can move about and you expand its production capabilities. So as mm. long as you don't lose that ship, you can rebuild your army as many times as you want. But as soon as it's gone, You're all done. you have is all you have. So you got to make it count. So <laughs> for me, that's kind of, you know, it's not a detriment to StarCraft. You know, it's just that's kind of what set up my RTS mind. So, mm -hmm. and I kind of adapted to base building when I got into Dawn of War. But, you know, like... Oh, Dawn of War, it, that was a good one. Yeah. It, it, and it's like um, first five expansions back in the early 2000s. Yeah. 
Yeah, I might. It might be a bias thing, but yeah, I'd rather play Dawn of War personally. But again, maybe that's just. It's a much. I think it's a much newer yeah. game. Yeah. So and mean, that and that might be outside of that range that I set earlier. So take it or leave it. <laughs> it's fine. So for me, I am completely and unreasonably biased. Like, <laughs> I can Star- tell. I, I, I say it. You know, it's like <laughs> StarCraft was my first RTS. You know, and I like I am also a big sci-fi fan. Yeah. And so this was, you know, checking the right boxes. You know, this and is then not too- Warcraft in space is <laughs> much more sophisticated. And then, like, on top of it, too, just the story. So not just the gameplay, not just the audio of the game, the story. Like, you know, all the political intrigue, the twists and turns, (laughs) the narrative takes, you know? Like, and for anyone watching this who hasn't played, we won't spoil what comes out of the chrysalis, but, like, when that happens the first time, you're like... (laughs) Mind absolutely blown. It it hurt. Like, it it physically it, hurt. <laughs> it it it's yeah. completely insane. You know, it's an Empire Strikes Back level twist where you're like, wait, what? Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'll agree. And so it's like StarCraft for me is the RTS that I use to measure all other RTS. Mm. You know? It's your baseline. Uh, yeah. It's it's it, it's the baseline. And that's what's so insane about original StarCraft, despite its age it can still act as a really good baseline for modern RTS because of how well it was made. Like, Mm -hmm. most of the traits of modern RTS are pulled from Warcraft to StarCraft. Like, the individual building units and stuff like that. Like That's the staple of RTS that I was first introduced to it in Warcraft 2, even though I didn't really play that game a whole bunch. But yeah, like it's it's nuts. Like you could load up StarCraft One today, and it's still just as good, just as playable, just as fun, just as infuriating as it was in 1998. <laughs> um, and there's still a very big active community on Battle.net since they remastered it back in 2017 ish. So it runs in 4K, has a higher resolution. I don't even have the remaster. I still just use base it, StarCraft 640 by 480 for life. It was pretty active even before the remaster. Oh, yeah, it was. But, I mean, the fact, too, that, you know, they made it free, you know, that you could just, if you got a Battle.net account, you can get original StarCraft. It's, yep. like, genius. Still can. Still can. I you mean, know, slightly disrespectful to some of us with Battle Chess, but you know what? <laughs> I understand 20 years later they want to give it away for free. That's their business. Oh man! Is that Let's... an actual original uh, N64 box for StarCraft? Or yeah, is this is my childhood box. Damn! Nice Jeez. childhood carton box. Jealous? Heck yeah! Jealous. Oh man! My first RTS was WoW 2. I'll admit that. <laughs> but after, yeah, I enjoyed WoW 2. But yeah, once StarCraft came out, like there was such a big difference. Between Warcraft 2 and Saga. And then the other one I played was another game that came out in 97 called uh, Dark Rain. That's the game that me and my brother played a ton. Mm. I have a vague recollection of that one, but I never played it. Oh, oh man. Not, not. See, that's what's funny. Like, I love RTS, but at the same time, like the game that me and my brother played a lot was Lords of the Realm 2 on MS-DOS, which was a... <laughs> turn-based hybrid RTS because you did turn-based overworld stuff and then all battles were real time and it was a ton of fun so when I first downloaded Civilization 5 because someone told me to and I was like oh maybe this is like Lords of the Realm like nah it's not like Lords of the Realm nope Nope. (laughs) like I'll still load up Lords uh... of the Realm today and play it because it's on Steam (laughs) Did you ever play like, Leviathan Warships? Yeah, nah. that kind of it's an RTS, like you said, but uh, instead of turn based, it's like time stops and you tell your ships what you want them to do. Yeah. And then when every player is ready, they submit, and then the next 10 seconds plays out undisturbed. Time stops, and then you decide what you want your units to do from there again. Yeah. So that'd be neat fun. Idea. That'd be fun. Neat idea. See, that's I, I like that type of game. To a degree, but 
yeah, I mean, RTS was king for me for a long time until I just jumped full on into shooters. <laughs> yeah. I oh, think once man. Halo came out, a lot of us here jumped ship, let's be honest. I I, I still enjoyed Command & Conquer 3, but that was like mm-hmm. the last hurrah for RTS for me. Was Command & Conquer 3 and Kane's Wrath. Like, I didn't... I mean, Command & Conquer 4 was a crap show. Um, StarCraft 2, I only played through... Wings of Liberty and Heart or Heart of the Swarm. I only played Heart through. Yeah, I only played through their campaigns once. Um, never really played the multiplayer a lot on either of those. So, like the last big hoorah for me was definitely Command and Conquer Three and Kane's Wrath. I spent tens and hundreds of hours playing those on three hundred and sixty of all things. Hmm. I had them on PC, but I preferred to play them on my three hundred and sixty. They made a good control scheme that worked, but anyway, and yeah. I, I I look at them on the 360 and be like, see, this is what StarCraft 64 implemented back in 2000. Like, yeah. Command & Conquer, base Command & Conquer 3 on 360 is an abysmal piece of trash in the controls. Very hard to play. Kane's Wrath, very easy, very fun to play, and uh, very similar to Halo Wars and its control scheme. It was It was great. And it's like, StarCraft 64 literally implemented a better control scheme than Command & Conquer 3 did back yeah, in the I year 2000. Like it doesn't it's so the, dumb. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's an unsung hero. It doesn't get the credit it deserves. Even if you think the PC version is fine, that's that's fine. That's your opinion. But, I mean, you got to admit, as far as controls on a console RTS goes, StarCraft set a pretty good bar. Yeah. I have you know, a couple it, of nitpicks just, about it, but overall, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, anyone that goes back and watches my stream of that <laughs> third to last Zerg you're, mission, you're, you're gonna you're gonna, gonna hear gonna you're, you're gonna hear every single complaint I had about the controls in that mission. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> well, is I you, only you, in you that may mission have once or twice accidentally hotkeyed the wrong group when you were trying to scroll the map. Once or twice, you know. Only once or twice. Yeah, Maybe shared your thoughts on that. It's the only complaint I have with the N64 controls is the fact that if you hold down Z, you can scroll the map faster. And the default B is to attack move. And I don't want to attack move because then my people get distracted, try to shoot something, chase it down, and die. So I don't want to press B. I want to press right C to make them just move so that way they'll run past everything, not shoot, make it to where they want to go. But if you're quick scrolling the map and pressing right C, all you're doing is selecting right C's control group of units and moving them instead. And it's like, crap. <laughs> it's so <laughs> irritating. <laughs> if you're you're fast scrolling, dude, you gotta let go of Z. Why are you fast scrolling and trying to move at the same time? Because uh, get, I get, have get, high you. APM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> Yeah, that this was a uh, kind of funny. Like I said, I've only been playing for a little bit now. Like I've heard all the memes of like the Zerg brush. But actually having seen one for the first time, I was like, like PTSD that I didn't create. <laughs> in. I was like, just like the collective PTSD of every Zerg rush. Just like. Zerg rush is even used even on, um, even on, even on shooters and other ones that it's used on uh, people who just rush. Oh, they man. use, they call it Zerg rushing. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah, I mean, talk about cultural impact. I mean, you can go to Google and type in Zerg Rush and get a fun mini game. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I've, I, you know, like again, up to I'll a month or two ago, I've never even played, and I already knew what a Zerg Rush was. Oh, you yeah. know, and I have to say, it's a annoying but valid tactic if you are a low light even. See, You're that's fine. when I developed the cannon wall. Quick, like, quick cannon wall is a you get two cannons. And a Zerg rush is ineffective. Yeah. Six yeah, Zerglings good. can't kill two cannons. See, Especially if they're behind a supply depot. Well, I mean, you can't go behind a supply depot when you're uh, 
playing as Protoss. Well, I, mean, but... was, I remember you used to block it off with Supply Depot. Oh, so yeah. You have to destroy this Supply Depot. But with the cannons, that makes it kind of hard. Yep, so that's another reason why Terran was so good, even against human players, is you get your three Supply Depots that you need to have for unit production anyway. And then you put a group of Marines behind it, in or out of a bunker. And uh, the, P the AI will never attack the Supply Depot once they're attacked by a... Uh, combat unit, whereas a human player will attack the supply depot, but they still have to get through the supply depot before they can get to your units, and by that time, Azur Grush is dead anyway. So, yeah, there, I mean, there were counters. Absolutely. There were counters to it. See, what you really did to piss off human players was uh, you'd build your supply wall at your little entrance there, like two or three uh, supply depots, and then you would just float your engineering bay over the top of them so that way they couldn't manually select the supply depots to attack because then it would revert to the AI of wanting to prioritize combat units attacking it and then they would run around and be stuck and dead anyway so fun times <laughs> well, fun times why usually, that's why they usually um, attack the flying units but even then well, if you have zerglings it won't work yeah you can't attack flying units with zerglings so no, it didn't matter oh with um oh with the lots. Or was yeah, or was zealots, you can't attack flying units. So yeah, it was a great counter to early Zerg and Protoss from human and AI players, so unless they skip um Love unless, Terran. They, <laughs> unless they do a um Hydras rush instead. Well if they're doing a Hydralisk rush, you'd hopefully have tanks up by then. Hopefully. That's I mean, that's the whole thing that makes StarCraft so great. There's there's counter strats to literally everything in that friggin' game, and <laughs> it's amazing. Just what about a Hydralisk, yes. What about Hydralisk um, Rush? Hydralisk Rush, you have tanks ready. Or you lay no, no, spider I, mines I mean, with you your could. vulture. Yeah, spider mines, spider mine the entrance, and just really piss everyone off if you can micro the spider mines that good. The setup of them. What about, what about a, Muta, a Muta Rush? Mutas are crap, dude. <laughs> I mean, Muta's, you're just going with, you know, missile turrets and bunkers with Marines. I yeah, mean. the Muta, the Muta is only really good in my mind when you have like 150 of them and they can actually one hit kill everything. And then the bouncing of their attack kills like three other things as a result. But I don't think you get your attack that high. <laughs> I know. Unless someone, unless someone um, doesn't upgrade at all. No. And you fully upgrade. But no, I mean, the Muta is just the uh, the starting ground. The Muta is just the starting ground for the Guardian. And, I mean, Guardians have their own problems, but... Hmm. Like, that's, again, sadly. that's the whole point. Like, they balance the game so well that there is a counter strat to basically everything in that game. So... I wish they, they would have kept the, the Guardians... Uh, yeah, StarCraft 2's multiplayer is very weird. Um, but I mean, They're even battle cruisers, battle cruisers, battle cruisers, carriers. Blame Starcraft for why I never played StarCraft One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like even well, it's, even the it's battle so cruiser that... carrier, like all out assault, are easily defeated by hydralisks. Yeah, hydralisks are so mean. Hydralisks are broken yeah. in StarCraft One. Against their units, like they're so incredibly broken. But so locos, if you're not careful. Oh man, lurkers are great. Of them. <laughs> lurkers are fantastic. Huh? I said they're fantastic. Yeah, lurkers are great. Have yeah, a bunch sure. of them set up. Just have them just maul stuff, especially if you make sure you have a good um, help. Have some some good units to help it. Man. But, yeah. Anyway, who has beaten both campaigns of StarCraft? Just I out have. of curiosity. You mean uh, ever or this month? Ever. Ever. Oh, yeah. I've beaten <laughs> all campaigns. <laughs> I did it this month. <laughs> yeah, you did it no, this month. Oh, I, that's not true, because I, uh, I did the first Terran and Zerg campaigns, like, last year. And then I did the rest of this month, so I guess that's not technically true either. But anyway. You finished I it within the last month. It's fine. I just started <laughs> a Terran campaign um, a couple weeks ago. Right after we played, I actually started, oh, that nice. week I actually started playing 
but, the campaign. But yeah, nice. I was just curious to see like who's gotten the full story or not. So I'm assuming that Zachary hasn't gotten the full story yet, so we won't spoil anything. Yeah, we, um, we, we won't spoil anything. I'm just... Man, this story takes you on a ride. Yeah, and that's part really of what does. makes it so great. Yeah, it really does. I think, I think I'm the story for, for the it. second one is, is decent enough. Yeah, the second one had a good story. I like the campaigns uh, of the second one. But there's... I mean, Heart of the Swarm kind of ruined it for me a little bit. A little bit. It seemed to negate all yeah. Wings of Liber- Li- Wings of Liberty, so it was kind of weird. But yeah, well, like the 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 campaign in two does not feel as well written to me personally as the campaign in the first one. It lacks like the intrigue and the twists that made the first one so interesting. Yeah, uh, that's true. That is true. Yeah. There's also, quite a few twists in the first one and and uh, Boudou. And you know, also, and and this won't surprise Ice. He knows how I play games like Mega Man and whatnot. But <laughs> I love that StarCraft. So many of the campaign levels are salt the earth, wipe your enemy from the map. That speaks to me. <laughs> and then in StarCraft Two, they're mostly timed. Either survive or achieve an objective within this time. And it's like, but but there's a base over there and I haven't raised it and I need to raise it. <laughs> it's not in flames that it needs to be. <laughs> okay. I could I could agree with that. I mean being the to demolish it is one thing to ensure that it needs to be done. You just got to get quick yeah. enough to be able to demolish it and still do the objective. Just got to get good. How are you going to do that on the train level in Wings of Liberty? Tell me that. How are you going to stop all those trains and wipe out all the bases? Five groups of Marines and medics because that's all you needed in Wings of Liberty's campaign. And they were invincible. And you know it's true. <laughs> Every single mission, Marines and medics... Fully upgraded. You beat but the whole you game. You don't get to hear Thor is here. Thor is here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was good. Uh, I do. I'm... Uh, I do love how well StarCraft One holds up in that regard, though. Like gameplay, story, uh, the graphics. If you get the remaster, are very like polished. And even if you don't want to use them, like even the original 640 by 480 still looks really good. The N64 is 320 by 240, gets the job done, especially if you have a good CRT shader or are playing on an actual CRT. Like it still looks pretty dang good. And then the music, the sound effects, the audio work, like this is seriously like a 10 out of 10 game for me. Like I don't, I try not to spout that around up that phrase around a whole lot because i mean it's so stupid there's no such thing as a perfect game and i mean starcraft's not perfect again but the pathing has a lot of issues the ai is stupid as dirt in a lot of areas like there's a lot wrong with it but it's just so fun to play you could do so much with the map editor you could do so much online with it still like it's still Everything that was there in 1998 is still there and more, like, which is insane for me to think about personally. Because, like, what other game has lasted, like, this is going to be going on, so it's 25 years, 25 years yeah. So it's a 25-year-old game mm. that's still very active, like... Has an active competitive scene. Yeah, that's yeah. nuts. Like, there's plenty of 25-year-old games that still have a lot of people talk about them. But, like, look at Halo 2. Like, look at these re-emergence of online servers for GameCube, Xbox, PS2. Like, you're not even getting, like, 50 people a night on those. Like, you'll get 50 people on weekends if you're lucky. Like, no one talks about them. And, I mean, even um, Unreal Tournament, they're closing the server or just closed the server for that one finally on the original Unreal Tournament. Like, even that... They closed it? Was like it was up there, but not to the level of StarCraft. Yeah. Well the thing with StarCraft is have you ever played any of the solo mit some of the, the campaigns that play that people made? Oh, I yeah. mean, that's that's another thing too. Like there's there's a bunch of these campaigns that people actually <laughs> make. 
There were like, what was made. there was there was one that came out like in two thousand that there was, was so widespread. There were two of them, right? They were so widespread that a lot of people thought that they were a legitimate game and they were just pirating it. Because there was one that added naval units and added naval combat to the oh, game. Geez. There were two unofficial expansion packs for StarCraft One that were like had Blizzard's blessing. Like if you go to the StarCraft wiki entry, you'll see them in there. But they weren't official expansions. No. But yeah, they added tons of new missions and units and different things like it's nuts the community for starcraft like it's one of those early examples of just cultural phenomenon for sure especially in the world of gaming i mean look at like they added starcraft tuned as a skin pack for starcraft remastered even like just all these things that came out of this game that are being recognized within it again like it's just nuts friggin nuts yeah. amazing game yeah. I'm, I'm sitting the... here and all of a sudden remembering that I forgot more of my merch because they made StarCraft the board game. Does <laughs> that just play like Risk? Please tell me it just plays like Risk. No, it actually, it kind of feels like playing StarCraft. Oh, I no. thought about it earlier because the funny thing is you, you play your the game in rounds <laughs> and you have actions like build, attack, research, you know, all sorts of stuff. You play these face down, everyone plays at the same time, and then you flip your things over and you take your actions. Oh you my know, gosh. independent you so you don't know what the other players were doing, and you just take your actions at the same time and hope you didn't get attacked when you weren't ready for it. <laughs> Dang, okay. And it's crazy too, because every time you play, it's different. Because you have like uh thirteen or fourteen planets. Oh okay. and depending on how many players you play, you do two planets for every player, and you'll pick them and then set them up as the first phase of the game. So your board is different every time you play. Oh, nice. Found a picture of it. That is a lot of components. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's a fun game to play. It's difficult to get going because the very first time you teach someone how to play, it'll take a full hour to explain the rules. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And set up takes 30 in. minutes. That's why I can't get I mean, into board, board games, man. Yeah, the board on Board Games it, Geeks, it says like 180 to 240 minutes. Well, cause I don't have the patience here's, for here's tabletop. The, it's it's a thirty what? minute setup, and the mm -hmm. very first time you play, it's an hour to explain the rules. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's, but like, yeah, the thing is, it's it's a less than two hour game once you play. Yeah. yeah like, if, if it takes more than that, you're playing it very wrong. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't get people who tell me that risk takes six hours. I'm like, are you all just sitting there too afraid to attack each other? Come on, make things yeah. happen. <laughs> I wonder if this could be turned into like a card game, like kind of the same idea where like you place cards that do things, you place them face down and flip them up and just like take a lot of the component stuff out. You know, that might, yeah, I don't out. know. There's, <laughs> it's really fun though. You know, and the I'm minis are super now. cool. There's the, something the, just special about flipping over a card and deploying unit and putting a, you know, battle cruiser down and just staring someone in the eye who only has like <laughs> Marines on the board. And you're like, guess what my next card is? Guess, you know, it's Ooh. like <laughs> the mind games, nice. the yeah. mind games. Um, I love it. Yeah. Tabletop's just never really been my thing. I just don't have the patience for it. I had someone try to get me into Gloomhaven and it's just like, I, no. I've never no. done tabletop either, but then they announced StarCraft the board game, and I was like, "There, guess I'm I getting mean, into tabletop." Yeah, well, let's load up tabletop simulator, everyone. I know, right? Yeah, as long as you could, um, like the only tabletop the I've done in like the last ten years is with you, fun. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could do that more, but off topic. But yeah, uh, get getting back, man. Yeah, we cult cultural everywhere. impact, cultural impact. Cultural of impact. This this discussion is about StarCraft, y'all. We promise. Yes, it jacked up. Good kinda, to go. The fact that we're rambling about other things, like it really is a part of the culture of gaming. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't play RTS games, you know what StarCraft is. Whoa, whoa, you know, and whoa. not even by name, you know the brand, you know the Zerg, you know, even if you don't know what they're called, you know what it is. You could be shown a picture, it's like that's a StarCraft. Why, why so, did, why did. Why did Wiz and Sir Lowell's like swap places on my screen? Like this is funky. 
Uh, evil plan y'all to just, y'all just, their life. Y'all just flipped on me right now. That's, see, that's funny. It didn't flip on my screen, but it probably yeah. happened because I muted myself so that everyone watching this video wouldn't have to listen to my four-year-old yelling. <laughs> But, <laughs> That's weird, man. It's, yeah, it is. It broke my head right now. Okay. Um. Anyway. Yeah. Let's go ahead and close this one out then. Yeah. Like, let's just give our final thoughts on StarCraft here. So, we'll just. I was gonna start with Zachary below well, me, but I guess we'll start with Zachary to the side of me now. This is my head. It's weird because I've been to the side of you this whole time from my perspective. Yeah. yeah but anyway. thing, no, nothing changed on my side. I don't know. Apparently somehow hitting the mute button shuffled your view, which <laughs> is a very weird all. feature, Discord. It shuffled it Very weird all. feature. Anyway, Zachary, uh, yes, close us anyway, out with StarCraft on your experiences with it. Yeah, so... Uh, well, yeah, only been playing recently. Uh, I don't think it's converted me. Like I said, other RTSs have kind of broken me in. Uh, <laughs> but I think it deserves the credit it gets. It definitely deserves its place in gaming history. And I think the N64 version definitely deserves a lot of praise. I know that might sound like an easy thing for me to say, <laughs> but I mean, the, the fact that they were able to get a very, like, yeah, they had to compromise, but... The fact that they got, in essence, StarCraft on an N64 is baffling. So just special credit to that, even if you don't ever plan to play on the N64. Just well done, devs. Uh, mm -hmm. StarCraft, getting to a score, kind of hard to say. Uh, doesn't jive with me uh, 100%, so I can't give it a 10, but it's fun to play, so... If we played it, I'd play it, but otherwise I wouldn't play it for myself. <laughs> Although I will probably do the story now that you guys mentioned how good it is. So we'll and, get you uh, in on some UMSs on the PC version too, so you can yeah. have fun doing some turret defense. Sounds fun. And uh oh, look at the yeah, so that's pretty much my opinion. It's it's good. It's not quite for me, but it deserves a spot, as does Halo Wars. <laughs> Ensemble was the greatest RTS studio, and their last game was Halo Wars. You go from Age of Empires got, 2 to you, Halo you Wars. Have, just no. You got Microsoft to I'm thank sorry. for that, though. Nah, they nah, can't nah. help yeah. that it was their last game. Yeah, you, and they you didn't even want to for that. I, I would close them down after Halo Wars 2. That game was abysmal. <laughs> okay, anyway, next person. One of the worst RTS consoles. No. Bad Conquer 3 blows that game out of the water. Anyway, the claws, leave us with your thoughts on StarCraft. I'm not even gonna let them give me a rebuttal on this. You could roast me in the comments for hating Halo Wars. I gave Halo Wars Halo 2 a Wars. six out of ten, by the way, in my game timer review. Six out of ten for Halo Wars 2. That game was garbage. <laughs> and that was that was me feeling like five out of ten was too mean, by the way. I literally gave it a six out of pity. Like, six is not a good score, but it is also far from the worst score. Yeah, I was going to give it a five that's, originally. That's a middle of the field score. That's a meh, it's okay, you know? Yeah, I was going to give it a five, but I felt like it was too harsh. But anyway, McClaws, tell us about your thoughts, final thoughts on StarCraft. Um, as you guys mentioned, the campaign is fantastic. I'll admit, they did a great job on the campaign. Um, the map editor, the map, user map is probably one of the greatest things they've ever did. And what came out of StarCraft and even the community itself because of that is amazing. And the stuff that's been, heck, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, never mind, that's from, that's from Warcraft 3. But Warcraft 3 <laughs> it was has been, too. I give it an 8 or a 9 total. Like, it is one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite games, and it wasn't for the for the fact that I just can't get people to play some of my maps I like playing. I'd probably still be playing it now. It's fair. It's fair. All right, Wiz, what do you got for us? I mean, like I said, I'm very biased toward this game. Uh, I I will probably uh, I'm, I'm gonna give this one an eight and a half out of ten. Uh, there are we haven't talked about them, but the installation missions, those are legitimately just not fun. You know, you know, when you're going through the campaign, cruising, having a blast, 
and all of a sudden you're like, you have one commander and a couple of, you know, regular units in an installation. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. how fast can we get through and be done with this? That's true. Those and, missions really. And and then the other piece of it is, it's funny, you know, as a whole, I think StarCraft original is better than StarCraft 2. But StarCraft 2 has two quality of life features that I like. And the one is hit F1 for your idle worker. That's an amazing oh, feature. Yeah. It's absolutely oh. amazing. And that's the one thing where I'm like, Blizzard, for the remaster, why didn't you add this small feature? Let me hit F1 yes, to call I my idle worker. Added that. Yeah. Such like such a brilliant quality of life change. And you know, just you know, again, for the remaster, removing the unit selection cap. It'd just be a small thing. But like those are minor things that when you just play the original game don't bother you until you play two and you're like, oh, life could be this way. Yeah. But still, eight and a half out of ten for a game that's twenty five years old. Absolutely solid. It's like seriously, go give that campaign a chance if you haven't already. Yeah. So for me, it's mm, so many, so many nights staying up till four or five a.m. playing StarCraft Online over dial-up back on Windows ninety-five. Um. Uh, so. I am also heavily biased for the game, even though I like other RTSs more than it, but it just is, it was very well balanced for the time. They kept patching it. It kept getting updates. It kept getting better. The campaign was phenomenal, just very well written, very well acted. Voices are funny, if not, like, even if they are a little stereotypical, but they're still fun. Uh, the music is still fantastic to listen to. And just controls the ability to use hotkeys, like all this stuff that just wasn't even part of my head before that game came out. Like that is now like if it doesn't have this, what kind of game is it? What the heck? Um, so yeah, not perfect. Some very irritating things about it, but it's still just a solid. Uh, like, I called it a 10 out of 10 game earlier, but to be more objective with it and not completely biased, we will give it a 9. <laughs> uh, and if there's somebody out there that still has it play it and wants to check it out on N64 or PC, I think you're just going to have a good time. Like, obviously, the N64 version, you're going into it as an N64 computer from 1994. So you're going to have performance issues, but if you're playing on a PC from the same time period of 1994 to 1995 it's exactly the same that's how i grew up playing it so mm -hmm. yeah no matter where you play starcraft it's a good time just that one third to last zerg mission in brood war might piss you off with its controls but other than that it's a very solid experience and i don't hate starcraft 64 like everyone else seems to like i think it is a fantastic way to play the game overall um but yep you can still play multiplayer online today which is just another great facet of that game just because of all the custom stuff the community has made, playing it competitively. Like, there's something for everyone in the multiplayer scene. And that's what made me love it so much back in the day. Like, it was my first online game on dial-up, of all things. So, good times. So, go play StarCraft. You won't regret it. And if you do, well, it just ain't for you. And I'm sorry that you are a terrible person. Of course, the one thing I forgot to mention was the dialogue you get on some of the, some of the units when you keep clicking on them. <laughs> Secret do not dialogues. Forget, Secret yeah, dialogues not are great. Unit dialogues. They are hilarious. That's another great thing about the N64 version. They keep one of the three secret dialogue lines for every character in the game. Just one of the three? Well, uh, yeah, it's an N64 part. Audio files, man. It's a big file. You need to remember that they took a 1.1 gig game and they put it in a 32 megabyte N64 cartridge. It ain't even the 64 megabyte cartridge. It's a 32 megabyte cartridge. They'd use the 64 megabyte cartridge. My mind shudders at what that version would have been possible of. <laughs> like double the space with what they already got in it? Like, oh my goodness, Bring back the voice acting. <laughs> Factor yeah. 5 compression tech. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, what they did was amazing. <laughs> How they managed to shrink a big game and what they managed to put in and what they did for the 64 
really made show just how great they did on the 64 version. It just makes me think of how great the 64 was as a console. <laughs> but anyway, that is our discussion for StarCraft and Brood War. Check it out. I think we are all unanimously unanimous in agreeing that you should definitely check this one out. Yes, but, so. Uh, Zachary, Wiz, McClaws, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Appreciate all of you for participating in Game of the Month as always. And we will vote on a new Game of the Month for October uh, in Discord. So if you want to be in these discussions, be sure to check out the Game of the Month discussion tab in Discord. It opens up once you hit like level five or something so we just don't get a bunch of random spam. But these discussions are open to all. And if you'd like to be a part of them in the comment section, would deeply appreciate that as well. So, yeah, we're just going to call it here. Take it easy, everyone. You must construct additional pylons. <laughs> we need to get the Zachary on for Sunday. <laughs> we need 